I'm Emily. And I'm Clark. And life is still an adventure. <laughs> Lately, our adventure logs have been a little the same, but not anymore. That's right. After two years on our antique sailboat in the Dominican Republic, we've temporarily put our sailing boat life on hold, and we are now in a truck camper exploring the United States. And we're going to tell you about how that's been going so far, boat life versus RV life, and what's coming up next in this adventure log. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Clark. We opted out of a typical American life to live more independently, frugally, and off the grid. We typically travel the world in our antique sailboat named Temptress, but we put that on pause to explore the United States in a truck camper. Each month, we sit down to tell you where we are, what we're doing, share the best and worst moments, answer questions, and tell you exactly how much it costs us to live this life. This is our adventure log for August 2022. Just after August 1st, we hopped on a plane in the Dominican Republic and flew back to the United States. Our first stop was Indianapolis for Gen Con, which is a gaming convention, and I met up with a bunch of my internet gaming friends, and we play tested some of my games and played tested other games, and uh, experienced what that whole giant convention and being around lots of people is like. We also met up with some patrons that uh, were that lived in town, and they took us out to a very nice dinner. Yeah, we didn't get a picture though. No, we're, we're sorry. We're getting better <laughs> at that. This land life is different than the boat life. It's taking some getting used to. And then from there, we went up to Syracuse, where I met another one of my game designer friends, and we played some games with him. Uh, then we went up to northern New York, uh, Jefferson County. That's where uh, his parents live. Yeah, I'm not hiding it. It's just a, such a small town, no one's ever heard of it. Mm -hmm. It's like two roads cross. Um, and we borrowed their truck camper, this truck camper, and we started modifying it. You know how I am. I like my off-grid power systems up to snuff. So this camper, which was just plain Jane, uh, now has uh, solar panels. It has um, an inverter. It has uh, a lithium battery system tied together with my little creation. It's about halfway to having an air conditioner that'll run off batteries all night, which would be really nice when we get down to Arizona. Mm -hmm. I also had to redo how the truck charges the camper when we're driving down the road, how it charges off the alternator, yeah. because for modern Ford trucks are a little bit weird. So I just bypassed that system and put in a DC to DC charger. So and thank you to the commenter who pointed out that issue to yes, us. Yes, <laughs> I probably would have beat my head trying to figure out where the resistance in the wire was. And it just happens to be that's what Ford trucks do nowadays. So mm -hmm. we, we just fixed that. And Emily's been going crazy on making it home. Well, organizing it and getting stuff off, getting more stuff on, those sorts of things. And while we were up there, we visited your grandmother, yep. who's 99. Uh, so it's always good to see her yeah. every time we go visit. And then from there, we started on our camper trip. So you probably saw our first adventure log for the camper trip. If you didn't, it's up there in the corner. Mm -hmm. You can tap to see the first episode of our trip. So after pimping out our camper, as your mother would say, in New York, we took a trip up to Ontario, down through uh, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and up to Wisconsin, where my parents are at. We'll do a whole video detailing that but just so you know we're in wisconsin that's uh -huh. where we are that's the that's the current living situation so what do you think so far boat life versus camper life well it's a little early to re to give judgment on that because we've gone boondocking for two nights mm -hmm. only all the other nights it's been friends or viewers Drivers. or patrons along the way and we camp in their driveway. We have too many friends. Yeah. It's a problem to have. We're dramping. Driveway but camping. As we go more west, where we know fewer people, and the west is big and open, so we're going to definitely be doing the camping thing a lot more. Mm -hmm. And just honestly, most of the people who know us and watch our channel are boat people and they live on the coast. Yeah. So we'll be able to kind of get out and disconnect and be one with nature mm -hmm. when we get out that way. Uh, let's talk about camper projects, other projects. You've been working on Bank Manager. Right. Uh, I got another 50 boards together, and this time I had them shipped directly to Wisconsin. Uh, her mother does our shipping for us, and we couldn't do this without that. So everybody thank Joan when you get your uh, get your package. Mm -hmm. Fulfillment headquarters. Fulfillment headquarters. So now they come in, and her father, Mark, he was he's retired now, but he was a nuclear operator, you know, re reactors. 
So he's really good with procedures and doing things exactly right. He is now going to take in the raw boards and he's going to run them through testing and software update and everything and get them ready to go. That will free us up to be able to get on the boat after this and go down Panama, Colombia, yep. you know, go other places. And still have the bank managers going yeah. through. Mm -hmm. And we're working on the air conditioner, waiting on a few more parts, but we'll have an air-cooled version, hopefully, of the air conditioner in addition to the water-cooled version that Clark has uh, come up with that a lot of people are benefiting from right now. Yeah, and it can go into, well, houses if you needed low power, like off-grid. But it certainly could go into campers like this, and I think if I had an um a, a semi truck, I would probably want one of these things. Mm -hmm. Even though we haven't officially been camping all that much, um, I will say that there are definitely some differences I noticed between living in the boat and living in the camper. Like being able to just pull off to the side of the road when you get tired of driving, traveling, yeah, yeah, and just opening up and just having a picnic, just finding a park and saying, yeah. "Let's eat here." And by the way, we have all our food with us, and we don't have to eat at a 30 degree angle, which is nice too. Constant uh, internet connection, so you can find the largest log in the area or some little thing to look at while we have our lunch, mm -hmm. which we did. Yep. Um, also, uh, along those lines of 30 degree angle, sailing is at the 30 degree angle, but generally when you stop, it's straight. It's hard to find a level place to park the camper. Mm -hmm. And we've been having some problems with the fridge, the dramatic fridge, propane fridge. We always tell you how much we spend during the month and uh, we give you the little budget of our life, well, this one's going to be different. It is. Um, we did a lot of outfitting the camper to start out with, so I'll give you the numbers for kind of getting the camper ready to go, and then our actually living on the land, living in the camper budget as well. We normally have a, about a thousand dollar a month is our budget um, for the boat, and we usually stick to that. So we'll see how the numbers shake up with camper life. So we have two categories to report this month. The first one is getting the camper set up so that we could go camping with solar panels, the cheapest lithium battery we could find on Amazon, the MPT charge controller, the uh, inverters, all that stuff, $1,541. That seems like a steep thing for just a few months, but we're returning the camper to Clark's parents, so it's a nice gift to give them as a thank you for letting us use the rig. Inside, we have a lot of things we had to restock, just personal care items, toothpaste, uh, cleaning supplies, all that sort of stuff, plus the organization of the bins and the boxes and the baskets, uh, everything we needed to get organized inside for our life, and that was $493. So the total for prepping for the trip was $2,034. Now on to our regular living expenses, which, as you know, are about $1,000 a month when we're out on the boat. Let's see how this compares. We had food expenses of $240 for groceries, $170 for restaurants. We ate out a lot more when we were at Gen Con because we didn't have the rig yet, so that was probably a little higher than we'll usually expect. We spent $22 on clothes because we didn't really have any warm weather or some cold weather clothes. Um, we spent $176 on personal items, um, $10 on parking at Watkins Glen, $212 just on fuel for the truck. Back in the Dominican Republic, we're paying $50 for the mooring still. We still have $161 per month in health insurance, $40 for phone, $30 for streaming services, and we spent about $40 shipping things around, returning them to people and getting ourselves stuff um, for the trip. So our total was $1,154. Well, we spend a bit more on fuel than we do running our dinghy around. Absolutely. It definitely costs more in gas. So that's our budget. What was the worst part of this month? Well, so far it's been a lot of work for me, setting this camper up. You could do it, just throw wires and drill holes, but I'm doing this for my parents, so they'll have all this system afterwards, and so it'll look nice for them. So I have to take half the camper apart, run some wires, put it all back together. Mm -hmm. And it's taking a lot of time. I kind of had the idea, you buy the parts and you're done. I forgot how much installation is even in a camper. But that's almost all done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been working really hard. So we haven't fully been in adventure mode. We've been in camper renovation mode, I guess you uh -huh. could say. How about you? Um, I don't know that there's been a worse part. I think that like when I'm doing work online, I do a lot of the game design stuff and things on the internet, on the boat, and being in the same place all the time it was very easy for me to just pick up the phone or set a meeting and say, yeah, I'll talk to you on Thursday. And now our schedule is a little more up in the air. So I'm working a little bit more kind of on my own and just via email, which is different. Yeah. And we're spending, this is kind of the best for me, we're spending time with friends and people we've met along the way and family. 
but that makes our time not our own. So like editing videos was difficult. You might notice last week's video came out quite late. We were scrambling right to the last minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're definitely uh, a lot more of our day is occupied, but it's not like super productive. It's just, you know, enjoying life. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes enjoying life gets in the way of being productive. So we're trying to find that new balance of productivity and also just relaxation mm -hmm. and relaxing. But generally, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, generally, life is pretty damn good. That is correct. <laughs> and it's still great. And let us know what questions you have, because this is new for us, the camper life, and we're not sure exactly what we should and shouldn't talk about. Um, let us know your comments and give us your feedback, and we will keep them coming, and we will talk to you next month. Bye. Bye. When we met, we knew that we did things differently. adventure